What's up, toy community? I wanted to start this video out by giving a huge shout out and thanks to every one of the subscribers who has found my channel over the last year, subbed up and shared it, and helped me to get the channel to where it is right now. It's outstanding and I want to say thank you for everything. It's phenomenal. Now let's get into this top 10. It's going to be a little different because I'm a little different. Pretty much the gist of it is, if the figure wasn't in my collection last year and it got into my collection this year by whether it be paid for, given to me as a gift, traded, you know, whatever it will be. Well, then said figure, by God, is going to be in the running for top 10 figure of the year. I will tell you that right now. I don't really feel it's necessary for me to explain that these are my opinions and stuff. It's my top 10 and here it is. Without further ado, I present to you number 10. Try to say it from dog. Now, there's a lot to say about this guy. Taking you back to Blockbuster days. As a kid going in there and seeing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. Pop up a picture here. I fell in love with this character. I've absolutely loved him. NECA killed it with this. I mean, it is literally straight from the comics. But old. Mirage Comics is my second favorite design for the Turtles, right behind the first movie only. Second movie's good, but it's the first movie for me and the Mirage Comics. That's just what it is. I was stoked that NECA made him. I hunted this bad boy down for a long old time. His color scheme's great. His paint's great. Everything about him looks fantastic. Oh. But he's great. And he was my first review. Uh, if anybody wants to go back on the channel at all and watch that, it's awful. So bear with it. But uh, yeah. Well, any which way but loose. Plenty's wood. On to number nine. Oh, God. Oh, shoot. Oh. Ow. Bob is number nine. Highly surprised by how fun this figure was. Didn't expect to like him anywhere near as much as I did. And, you know, here he is. Top ten of the year. Of the year. It's just crazy. Couldn't recommend him enough. He is super duper fun. I mean, a surprise banger of the year for sure. I think he deserves that award. I mean, he's just great. I love him. The color schemes really pop on my shelves too. It really draws your eye right to him. But, I mean, he just was so much better than Deadpool. Spoiler alert, Deadpool ain't on this list. For all the people who passed on the Deadpool 2-pack, na 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 boo boo stick your head in poo-poo. Bob... I love you. Number eight's coming up near hell. Here we go, number eight. Spoiler, Braille acquired. Thank you to my beautiful, amazing wife who gave me my Grail figures for Christmas this year. They're now gracing their presence on this top ten list. Now that I got these and I got the Triceraton Zog, all I need now is NECA's Splinter, and I will have my complete collection. Oh my goodness of all classic Mirage comics, in my opinion, in my styling. I like the creepy long necks and the gigantically sized over-proportioned feet. Again, odd proportions, elongations, and stuff like this. My bread and butter, it's my wheelhouse. It's what I put my jam and jelly on. I don't know what that means. For 16-year-old figures, they still hold up. I couldn't have been more happy, and especially, they are way more poseable than I thought. Oh my god, they're fantastic. Review to come more than likely, so just stay tuned to the channel, sub up if you haven't. All right. Oh, God, I can't stop looking at him. Anyway, on to the next one. Coming in hot next, we got SH Figuars Naruto. Or Naruto? I don't know how you say it because I'm not familiar with the show or anything else. I don't know any of it, but this figure is amazing. In terms of posability, my God, man. Talk about just like the easiest figure to get into poses. Come the new year, my collection and everything else is going to start drastically changing. I'm definitely going to be getting more into a few more imports here and there, uh, more third-party figures, great things like this. Just I want new and fresh, and this is incredible. The amount of accessories. I mean, you get so many hands, so many faces. You get a cool little knife. This guy is just a ton of fun. And for anybody who regularly watches the channel, clearly fun is in the name. So if it's fun, I'm going to like it. Anyway, there's Naruto. I know he runs weird. Coming in next, we got Spider-Man. You know who it is. As close to perfection as you can get for a Spider-Man figure that can fit either in your comic or in your MCU displays. Honestly, any displays. 
they contain a Spider-Man or need a Spider-Man. It sucks we didn't get to see more of this version on the big screen, but uh, oh well, figure form is good enough. I'm going to stick with my theory, though, about how we're not going to see Tom Holland be Spider-Man anymore, but I negate the fact this figure's phenomenal. Again, the only thing that would have put him higher on my list is giving this bad boy some boot cuts. He would have easily been a contender for number one had he had boot cuts. For anybody who missed out on it, I'm sorry you did, but you can still find them for $24.99 on most any site, so go grab them. Spider-Man thwip. <gasps> Everybody listen, we're to the point of no return. We're down to the top five. And I really kind of feel like this is just going to be a gigantic, nostalgia-based childhood list so far, because that's all it is. And it's going to continue. Number five, Michael Keaton's Batman. It speaks for itself, I'm pretty sure. I don't really have to speak too much on it. I mean, this is Tim Burton, 100%. This is me sitting in the theater in 1989, watching Batman. I believe this was my first theater-going experience. If I couldn't give enough praise to McFarlane, bravo. I don't care what everybody says. The man's fantastic at what he does. Look at what he accomplishes. This is miles beyond what NECA did. I don't know, maybe 10 years back, 12 years. But McFarlane hasn't raised the prices on any of his figures since he debuted the line. It's absolutely astounding that he's continually upgrading and improving every single thing about his figures. And he's not charging you a penny more. Bravo, McFarlane. I'm glad you start up my top five. Michael Keaton... You the man, Mr. Mom. So coming in at number four, it's a little bit different. And little is uh, an operative word. No pun intended. Rocket. It is Rocket Raccoon. Oh, hey, you dropped your pisty. The winter weather is killing my hands. I'm sorry they look gross. I'm trying my best here, people. So for the very last outing on the Guardians, they give us the best body that we've ever gotten for a rocket. Sure, that face, it needs some work. But I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I could have put Black Widow in this spot, okay? I was really debating between Black Widow and Rocket. And I came to one conclusion as to why he's going to be on this list. And here it is. Black Widow's body. That's going to be reused and reused and reused. And we're going to get plenty of offerings from that buck. This buck is never going to be used again. This is the most, I would probably say, articulated short body that Hasbro can come up with. Any three and three quarter inch figures, too. Swap out the hands, pop on a new head. You got a little guy in a suit. This body just allows so much expression in such a small little package. I mean, it's incredibly, incredibly articulated. Way more than it needs to be. Way more than any other rocket, for sure. Yeah, I should say, like, just because the limited chance that we're ever going to see anything this articulated and small from Hasbro again really makes me appreciate this figure for what it is. I mean, I can always appreciate the Black Widow buck on whatever character they choose to make it on, but... This is pretty much a one-and-done buck, and I absolutely love it. I made a few shorts, and I made a few TikToks with this guy. Uh, he's just, man, he is so fun. Fun factors really influence my decisions whenever I make my top tens. At least that's what I'm coming to decide. And like I said, kit bash customization options, they're there. You just got to look at them. <coughs> Ghost Rider, anyway. I hope y'all got room for one more, because we're going number three. Wow. Was there any doubt in anybody's mind, especially fans of the channel, that he would be anywhere but closest to number one without being number one? It's sad to see him now. This is what, two top ten videos where he hasn't made number one? But everybody knows my thoughts and feelings about him. I don't think I really have to say anything. I'm just going to show off this really sick-ass pose. And it just uh, highlights the possibilities about how badass Spot is and how diverse and how amazing and how elongated and goofy and misproportioned and just bravo for this amazing figure and for anybody who didn't watch my top 10 or any other videos and this is your first time with the channel i bought five spots this year i just hope this says a lot more than my words as to why he is so high on my list right now in front of your face spot say bye go f yourself It's ya boy being perfect. Again, we're just continuing on with this childhood nostalgia, man. If anybody saw my top 10 video, spoiler alert, he's on there. But everything I said in that, I'm not going to say in this. Wolverine is my favorite superhero right behind Spider-Man and Hulk. It's pretty much like a mishmash 
combination of all three of them. But this isn't just a top Marvel Legend figure for me. This isn't just a top figure this year for me. This is going to remain one of my absolute favorite figures in my entire collection. And oh my god, when they bring out the brown and orange suit, I don't know how I'm going to react. I don't know how I'm going to handle that at all. And I think we all know brown suit's coming. Especially with the release of this figure right here. Yeah, that's pretty much the brown suit already. <sighs> Until then though, this Wolverine will remain my number two. No! All of this leads to this one moment, the number one spot. So, let's go ahead and get into it. It's Agent Ross, dude! Are you serious? Yes! Psych! It's Phylong. Phylong is my absolute number one figure this year. Jada Toys is, in my opinion, the best action figure company of the year. Out of the gate, when they were coming out with the Universal Monsters, man, they put on an impressive show with that line. A hundred percent impressive. Now they got Street Fighter. They already got Chester Cheetah, and now they're tackling Mega Man. I'm telling you, Jada Toys knows what they're doing. Not only do you have just an amazing figure here as is, I'm going to go with the customization and kit bashing kind of stuff. Man, you can be anybody with this body on, man. You can be Van Damme, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, whoever. It's just, oh man, this figure's so perfect. I'm really hoping since they got Mega Man and they have Street Fighter 2, we got to be getting some sort of a hint towards a Marvel vs. Capcom line. It's inevitable, right? We got McFarlane teaming up with Hasbro to do the Marvel page punchers. I got a theory that Hasbro is going to be teaming up with Jada Toys and they're going to together release Marvel vs. Capcom. And hopefully, dude, if we can get some Marvel characters on these bucks from Jada Toys, those will be probably... I would say the definitive versions of those characters. Fai Long literally moves like an import. He feels like an import. He handles like an import. He is just so perfect. In all my 20 plus years of collecting figures, I've only called two perfect. This one and Wolverine. Because they are. They are the epitome of fun in action figure form. That's why they're so high on my list. And that's why they're here. All right, everybody. This is going to wrap up my very first year-end top 10 figure review. Boom. In the books. Got it done. Shout out me in the comments below your thoughts and opinions about this top 10. I would be dying to know everybody else's top 10, so put those in there too, why don't you? While you're at it, why don't you sub up if this is your first time watching? Because I got videos coming every week, shorts and everything else. I don't plan on stopping people. I don't know. I can't wait to see where next year takes us. There's going to be so much stuff. I don't know, man. Just stay tuned. Buckle up. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell. You're going to get first dibs on all these videos. That looks like a little pecker. Until next video, everybody. Share these videos. Get the name out there. Fun is offensive. I got big plans coming up for next year. Until then, deuce.